Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to do a quick tutorial on small parcel shipping. So we'll start with the who. Who is in small parcel shipping? Really, this is a duopoly. So we have two main players. You have UPS and FedEx. Now there's plenty of smaller regional based carriers that also participate in the small parcel networks, but we're gonna save that for another whiteboard and we're just gonna focus on these two massive global companies. These are $65 billion plus companies. They have a global reach. So if you have a package, you can essentially move it from A to Z anywhere globally for a certain cost. But today we're gonna just gonna focus on the lower 48 states in the US. <laughs> Um, some interesting news that you've probably heard about with UPS and FedEx is that due to COVID-19, volumes in their markets are huge. So if you think about it, folks are not going to malls, they're not going to stores, we're all sitting home, we're buying online. So all the online volume has gone completely through the roof. Um, so there's been a lot of noise around here. We're going to touch on some surcharges that have been put in place by both carriers uh, a little bit later on. The way, that, the way that UPS and FedEx have their network set up um, is they ship to zones in the, in the lower 48 states. So they operate from a zone two to zone eight. And these zones, zone two through zone eight are specific for ground shipping. So we're also just gonna focus on ground shipping today. Ground shipping is the most economical way that you can ship a package from anywhere in the lower 48 states. All right, real quick, just wanted to show you how packages actually flow through these domestic networks of both UPS and FedEx. It's essentially a hub and spoke network. And what does that mean? So let's use our example of we've got a company here in Massachusetts uh, that's going to be shipping out a package. All the UPS and FedEx drivers will go out, they'll make their daily pickups, and they're going to bring it back to a hub in mass. From there, that's gonna go through a sort. And each facility is gonna sort packages by a different geographical destination. Not the final destination, but just directionally a destination. So let's say that they're gonna build a truck to go to Chicago. Then they're gonna build another truck heading to Texas. and then another one headed to Atlanta. Now again, the tricky part for both operations is that they're only gonna know as soon as the package is tended to them on how much freight they have going in each direction. So if we take our example of a package shipping from Massachusetts to Seattle, let's use, let's use the example that this is gonna get on a truck going to Chicago. From there, Chicago, is gonna repeat exactly what Massachusetts just did. All their local deliveries will come into the network and then they will build outbound loads going in all sorts of different directions. Some of them heading back east. Now, after our package moves, say from Chicago, that is probably gonna hit one more terminal, if I had to guess. Salt Lake City is a huge break bulk facility for FedEx. Let's say it goes from Chicago to Salt Lake City. Then it goes to a local terminal in Seattle where it makes it out for FD final delivery. Now what's incredible um, and where there's been just so much improvement over time, and this is sort of the Amazon effect, is every all of us want our packages next day, two days. But even this in a ground network, this is gonna be max five days. That's a five day service point. In some cases it could be four. In cases like today, in the times that we live in, that five may be six just because of the overwhelming volume. But overall, we can move packages 3,000 miles in five days. Uh, that's awful quick and that's awful good for us as consumers.